Hey, Shalom. Uh, Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai, Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai, Brock the Yahweh, Brock the Yahweh Shai. Uh, all praise unto Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone and honest you brothers to be pushing this truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. So this here is going to be a relatively quick video uh, discussing uh, some of the um, solutions uh, to this, um, un you know, this uh, virus that's going out there and uh, what well, that's been out there and. Um, Pretty much um, one of the solutions that these different countries have is to uh, print more money. And as we've seen time and time again um, through our economic history, remember, when we're dealing with the scriptures and when we're dealing with history, when we're, when we're dealing with the economy, especially economy, things are cyclic. Okay, Scripture that comes to mind uh, to back up uh, the statement I've just made is that there's no new thing underneath the sun, right? So check it out. You've got a situation whereby uh, um, history repeats itself or repeats itself. You've got an economic situation, a situation where people have less money or they have less available cash to them or they have whatever the situation may be where you've got economic austerity, I believe the word is. Then the government usually tries to do something and then you have a, a, a historical you know, event within uh, history, obviously, and then that's likely to repeat itself. So it's always good to look at the history of uh, particular events and figure out what's going to happen within the future. The same thing applies to the scriptures. The same thing applies to history. You know, you just look at a, a, a similar event within the history and you match it up. And so now we've got a situation where these countries are printing uh, uh, money, or more specifically, the United States. So this is the uh, um, this is the uh, article. All right. And, um, you know, you can go to any outlet, news outlet, they're going to give you the same information. The United States is printing money to help save the economy from uh, the, um, I don't know if uh, YouTube's going to pick it up. So I'll just say that that particular crisis. Uh, but some wonder how far it can go. All right. I'm just going to read a little bit of this. It says, in frantic scramble to save e uh, American economy, which, man, the American economy has been done from a long, long time time ago a video that's similar to this that i've done in the past is dealing with how america is very similar to rome rome and america are very similar to each other because they are the rebirth of the same thing when we go into the bible when we go into the scriptures we know that there is a beast that once was and is not but he shall ascend out of the bottomless pit this is dealing with esau edom which is uh has got its epicenter rome if you will uh, out there within america just like how you had the beast existing within the greco-roman times but the epicenter was rome okay but the reach was the you know the known world at that time the same thing right now okay you got it to where the, the epicenter is america okay and uh um you know the, they're in control of everything that happens within the earth esau being the king of babylon is in control of everything that happens within the earth okay so um you can check out the breakdowns of the of the, of, of the beast to go into greater detail and more to get more clarity However, um, you know, uh, Rome went down uh, by means of spreading their army too thin by way of uh, devaluing their currency. And we got a situation out there within the United States where printing more money is going to lead to uh, the currency being more devaluated. And that's just natural, um, natural uh, uh, mathematics. Right. If you go into where you've got a particular commodity, you start washing it down. Is going to become less valuable, and that's what's going to happen with this e economy. So, as you can see here from this from this article, that's what they're going to do. It says in a frantic, frantic, okay, frantic, because the economy was already bad. The housing market has be, had been stagnating since the two thousand eight crash. All right, uh, you had it to where um, uh, the middle class has been eroded. That's the similitude to Rome uh, that I didn't mention a second ago, but I'm mentioning it now. Uh, um, you had all kinds of situations within America, economic indicators within America, letting you know that this, this economy that you have within the United States was not going to last, man. All right. So they're in a frantic scramble to save the American economy. The central bank of the United States seems to have the ultimate superpower. It all works like magic with a few strokes of a computer. The Federal Reserves can create dollars out of nothing. When you go into how money comes into creation, they literally borrow from the Federal Reserve, which has an account balance of zero, and they create money. When it goes to the banks, 
then you have currency because you have flow of transaction then you have fractional reserve banking so here it is they might create from this um it looks like it is that they're going to create three uh three point five trillion let's read this uh, by the end of the year, the Fed is projected to have purchased 3.5 trillion in government securities with the newly created dollars, one of the many tools it is using to help prop up the alien economy, right? So it looks like I'm not an economic specialist. I'm not going to pretend to be, but it looks like they're going to borrow somewhere within the region of 3.5 trillion. From where? From th out of thin air. That then goes to the, the local banks, your Barclays, your uh, Royal Banks of Scotland, or wherever bank you have out there, all right? Or uh, um, was this America, American Express, whatever the whatever the the, the 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 bank may be. When it gets deposited to the bank, or rather more, when it gets deposited to the government, because the government's going to be the one that's doing the spending. When the government gets the, the checks, the government then allows uh, different companies to borrow from that from from whatever. You know resources that they have, uh, uh, community funding, uh, housing projects. This is how money gets into the circulation from housing projects. You think about one good housing project, um, you can have all types of businesses that are going to flow and benefit off of that one uh, particular business. All right, that's why uh, uh, when you have a, um, uh, an economy that's got its epicenter upon one uh, outlet, like out there within Chicago, they was all focused on what? On on uh, was it Chicago? No, in uh, Motor Motor City. I forget what uh, city that is. I'm not from America, as you can tell. Um, but they had it to where um, after the car industry died out there within that region, all the businesses that was around it failed. So if you got it to where you got one government backed um, uh, uh, activity, then you got it to where all the the, the, the little bank, the little uh, um, uh, companies, they benefit from that. So now check this out. So let's say these government distributaries of, of funding, all right, start uh, taking money, right? That money is going to be spent and it's going to be deposited into these di different banks that you have within the world. Those people are going to take t t take that uh, the bank's going to take that money rather more, all right, and loan it to other people. So you might have ten dollars that you deposit within your own personal bank, and the bank only has to reserve ten percent of that, and then it goes to to borrow it to somebody else. Right, that person takes nine dollars or there or thereabouts because they borrowed it from the bank. Your money, right? But your balance is still going to say ten pound, and then and then the process repeats itself. So that's what you know as fractional reserve banking. So over time, currencies always go to a point of devaluing naturally. But when you print more money, what's going to happen? You're going to devalue it as well. So now let's go into some of the problems that are associated with um, printing money. The problem with printing money—that's the name of the article. Printing more money doesn't increase economic output. And that's the important thing. Economic output. The more products you make, the more products that countries are buying from you, you're exporting. Again, like I said, I'm not an economic expert, but I can get to the point, hopefully, with the examples that I'm making. Printing more money doesn't increase economic output. It only increases the amount of cash circulating in the economy. So you've got, you got more money circulating in the economy. The value of the dollar goes down after that money being printed. And then the fractional reserve uh, banking makes the uh, money go down in value as well. If more money is printed, consumers are able to demand more goods. But if, if, if firms have still the same amount of goods, that's the important they will respond by putting up the prices. In a simplified, uh, in a simplified model, printing money will just cause inflation. All right. So let's take a look at this. Uh, how printing money can cause inflation? Number of goods in red, uh, money money supply, and then average price of goods. So um, and they got the diagram over there. I'm not going to try to pretend to try to break it down, but you know you can see the diagram for yourself. You try to work it out. Um, but let's say, hopefully these bullet points is going to break it down for us. Suppose an econ economy produces $10 million uh, worth of goods. Example, 1 million books sold at $10. Basic mathematics. At this time, the money supply will be $10 million. If the government doubles the money supply, we still have 1 million books, but the people have more money. Demand for the books will rise. And the response to higher demand, in response to higher demands, firms would push prices, push up prices rather more. The most likely scenario is that the money supply, uh, where doubled, we would have uh, 1 million uh, books sold at $20. 
the economy is now 20 uh, 20 million rather than 10 million but 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 the number of goods is exactly the same and that's the critical thing we're not increasing output economic output things that we can sell okay and trade um other countries to gain assets we're merely increasing the money in circulation so the value of that money goes down we can say that the increase in gdp in money is an we can say that the increase in gdp is a money illusion and that's that's true here it is they might they might have it too, and all the economic indicators are going to say, oh, the economy is looking good, the GDP gone, is gone up. Of course, it's gone up by in terms of the number, but the value of products has also gone up. The cost of living has also gone up. You can have it to wait, and that's what inflation is all about. You can say your GDP is worth $1,500 trillion, right, trillion dollars, but what's the value of your $1? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you had it to where the US, the US dollar was, uh, um, well, you could still got it to where it's the, the world reserve currency and you match up, up against other uh, competing um, countries, then you have a situation where you could uh, compare and measure it against the, 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 the dollar because we know the value of the dollar. But when you got it to where the, the, the inflating and, and, you know, inflation is taking place and that, that value goes down, what are you going to match it up against? Well, one of the great commodities to match up against is gold and silver. And if you have to pay more money to get the same amount of gold because you know how much how much uh, program you're gonna get, that means to say you've got a situation of uh, e, um, economic uh, inflation. So let's go to the precepts, man. You can read those articles out for yourself. Again, I'm not an economic expert, um, but you can cer uh, certainly read those uh, uh, for yourself. Okay, so let's. Take, take a look at their uh, the precepts. All right. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that has been is that which shall be done. And just like how Rome fell, we know through the scriptures, new Babylon was going to fall. The new Rome was going to fall. All right. We read, read about that within the book of Revelations. We read about that all throughout the scriptures, how Esau was going to build himself up. Malachi 1 and, uh, 1 and, 1 and 4. All right, they was going to build up the um, our desolate places, but the heavenly father was going to throw them down. The thing that had been, which is Esau's and his empire and how he ruled them, he's ruling them exactly the same as he did before. It is that which shall be done. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing underneath the sun. Let's go to the, um, the uh, precepts concerning um, the economy. So the book of James. I believe it's James the five chapter, the fifth chapter I want to go to. James five one it says, "Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your gold and for your miseries shall come upon you, because there's going to be great miseries out here for the so-called rich people out of this earth. Their that the value of their assets is going to go, uh, 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 the value of their money is going to go down, man. Unless you've got assets, intrinsic assets, gold, silver, land, you're going to be very poor. Go to now, ye rich men, weep." And how for your riches, uh, for your miseries that are come upon you, your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and your silver is cankered. I believe that word is corrupt or rusted, is 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 devalued. And silver and gold are, are good, um, so-called uh, they're so-called good um things to have because they don't go off; it doesn't rust. Uh, your gold is cankered, is rusted, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasures for the last days. So that money that people was making, man, through uh, these measures that's going to be put in, they're going to be making less money because the the, the, the the value of it is going to go down, man. Like, you got it to where the value of stuff is going to go go up by double. Think about it. Let's say uh, uh, um, let's say they put, you know, like we've seen in that example, and you had it to where the, you know, the prices go up by double, but your pay is not going to go up by double. And that's the important thing to remember as well. Usually how much money is pumped in uh, into the economy is not in correlation with your salary. All right. And even if your salary did go up at the same rate of inflation, you it might as well not have gone up and inflation not happened in the first place. Because in terms of ratios, if you're having a one to one uh, uh, ratio, when you go increase everything by one but on both sides, you've got a two to two ratio, which is a one to one ratio. <laughs> But your pay never goes up at the same rate as uh, inflation, especially when they print money. Man. So what's going to happen? People are going to starve. 
So pretty much with that, you know, I'm gonna say all oh, praise unto Allah, Shema, Shai, Bashimokaka, Dash, Double Honors unto the Apostles of Great Millstone, and all she brothers that be pushing this truth in sincerity. Shalom.